Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to another video here. Uh, today, I want to share how you can make tree brushes. And it's similar to the grass brush tutorial that I made, except this time we're going to be working with trees. And um, this is a good way to help save you a lot of time if you're trying to uh, trying to get down a lot of detail without having to spend too much time painting each individual tree. This is a good way to, to, do, to do that. So... Uh, so with that said, let's get into the video. So the first thing uh, I have here is just a blank canvas and I'll share the canvas uh, information here. Just to be clear, this is a 3060 by 3060 canvas. Uh, it doesn't have to be those exact dimensions. You could do 4000 by 4000, um, but just make sure that it's a square. So make sure that the pixel width and the height are the same and uh, everything else doesn't really matter. So the color profile, I mean, here it is, it's the sRGB, but it shouldn't matter too much. Uh, neither should DPI or anything else like that. And so with this square canvas, uh, what we can then do is start to get in some trees. So this is where we're gonna paint the trees. We're gonna make the shapes for them um, and where we're gonna actually build the shape of the brush that we want. And so like I mentioned in the grass brush tutorial, if you haven't checked it out, um, I do have a tutorial for making grass brushes. You, we start with a shape, a basic kind of source shape for the brush, and then we're gonna add all the brush effects later on. Uh, but the, the important part right now is just to get the silhouettes down for the trees. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so I'm gonna just paint a few trees here and get in some shapes for the trees that I think would look good. And I'm going to do a few of them. You don't have to. You can do one. You can do several. Uh, but the purpose is to just get a few different ideas down to to um, to have something to choose from. So to do that, we can do that live right now. I'm going to use a this is from my Creative Space Basics pack. Uh, I'll just use probably these two brushes, the round, uh, the and the rectangle paint. So. Maybe I'll use a flat paint brush too, but it doesn't really matter what brushes you use. You can use any from Photoshop, Procreate, any software you use. Uh, but just get something you're comfortable with and something that um, that you like the style of because this is how the tree is gonna look. So I'll just, I'll start off with a flat paint too and I'm just gonna start to paint in a shape of a tree just in this area right here on the canvas. And I'm gonna start off with like a triangular shape. So something like this. Um, kind of more like an evergreen uh, tree. And we're just gonna start to paint this in. I'm just going back and forth, painting in uh, this tree here. And so, like I said, this tree is gonna be like a stamp. So the shape that you make will be repeated over and over again. Uh, so just make sure that you like the shape because it is gonna be how the brush looks uh, in, in the end. And what I'm doing here is uh, just erasing just using a round brush to erase into this shape. And I'll do this just to uh, kind of carve into this silhouette of this shape. And just to make sure that the shapes are exactly how I want it, want it to look. And I can switch brushes if I want, uh, just to get a different kind of style or different detail. If I feel like, uh, you know, just wanted to get some more brush patterns in there or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Again, this is just to make sure that this this part of the uh, process is just to make sure that you like the the tree shape that you're making, because, again, it is going to be uh, repeated often. And I don't want this to be too detailed either. So I'm going to try to just group a lot of these details. Um, so, for example, we'll see what we've got going on right here on this side right here. This to me is is too detailed and it's too repetitive because we have the same kind of shape going like this over and over again. And I don't want that because it starts to feel less natural. You could go technically, you I guess you could go with something like this on both sides. And it could probably work so if you want something like this. But I, I personally, I don't I just don't really like how this um, how this looks for the style we're going for. I feel like it, it, it could be a little bit better than that. Uh, but again, it is a personal preference. So just keep that in mind. So I'll just work on this tree a little bit here. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is this this tree is just a silhouette. So we're not adding any different colors or any different light or anything like that, because uh, we whenever we make the brush, we want this to be just read as a shape. 
And when we go and paint, that's when we add in the color, that's when we add in the lighting. But, but when making the brush, just keep it a silhouette, keep it a clean shape, make sure it's readable. And it may help to zoom out sometimes. And if we zoom out and uh, see how the shape is looking, because that oftentimes will be how it will look in the painting. So you zoom out and see how it looks. And if it reads well, then you're probably on the right track. So I'm gonna paint this for a little bit and I'm gonna do a few of these and then I'm gonna be back, I'll, I'll be back in a minute and talk about what I did. All right, so I now have some tree shapes here and I'm happy with them and I think we can move on to the next step and uh, we can make the brush now. But before we do that, I just have a tip in case you're struggling with this section or in case you just want a quicker way to do this. You can go to one of your previously made paintings. So in this case, I'll just go to the ones that I made for this channel here. And you can actually take one of the trees that you've made already and use a silhouette for that if you've, uh, if you've used separate layers so for example this uh this painting here i have these trees on this layer here and uh, this was all painted by me but what what i can do is use the selection tool and uh, cut out one of these trees here or just copy it so we can go up here tap on copy and we'll go back to the file that we were working on which would be this file here and we go up here, we tap on paste, and now we have this tree in here and we can make a brush out of this asset that we've already painted before. The only thing I need to do is just make this a solid silhouette. And this is already close to it just because of the colors that I used for that painting. But, um, but we just wanna make sure that it's solid and it doesn't have any value shifts or hue shifts or anything like that. Uh, so what I can do is just make a new layer above this, this added layer that we just put in there and uh, tap on it and tap on clipping mask and then we can just fill in this tree shape with uh, whatever color we want just to make sure that it's solid and then we can collapse this layer onto uh, this layer onto the tree layer and that was just one and now we have another asset and we could do that you see how quick that was if you have a bunch of trees that you painted before you can do that and make a, you can make a ton of these different tree brushes and if there's anything with the shape that you don't like for example down here it looks like there's a little uh, some erase marks in this tree we can just go in and uh, fill that out just to clean it up all right so now we have these six different trees here and they all read to me well as trees we can zoom out and they still read well as trees and um, that's kind of the test that I want to have for each of these brushes. Do they read well if we zoom if we zoom out uh, really far? And if they do, then we should be good. And I think they do, so I think we can move on now. All right. So now, once you have your trees that you've made, uh, we can pick the one that you want. And um, I didn't mention this, but make sure that they're all on separate layers. And if they're not, like you see, these are on the same layer here. We can just separate one of them. So we can just take this, select it, and go up here. Uh, to the wrench icon and then tap on cut and then we can paste it and it will just put it on a new layer So now we have them all on separate layers here and this is going to be important because we need to isolate the one uh, The one tree shape that we want. So in this case, I'll probably use um, I'll probably go with this one here At the top right just because it's a singular tree. We could go with any of these It doesn't really matter. But uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna just go with this one here uh, so I'm going to tap on the check mark here. If you're using Procreate, if you tap and hold on the check mark, it's going to vanish all the other layers. So they're still there, but they're just not being shown. And I'm going to just make sure that we have this one selected and increase the size. So it's about just about the size of the canvas. It doesn't have to exactly be there. Um, like we don't want it to clip off the edges like this, but we want it to fill pretty much a good portion of the canvas. So maybe something like something like this should be good and we want it to be centered and you can see these yellow lines uh, that create this this cross in the middle we want that to be uh, right 
snapped on like that and if you don't see those lines you can go uh down here the setting uh the snapping settings and turn these on all right so once we have that set up and it's in the center of the canvas this would be a time where you can make any adjustments you can erase into this if you want to clean up or if you want to add some details or whatever um, you can do that now and we can move on from there one thing i will do um and i like to do this sometimes i like to do this often with any type of stamp brushes i'll get an erase tool and i'll set it to an airbrush and it could be any type of airbrush and i'll just erase some of the bottom just slightly just to give like a little gradient at the bottom and not too much to where it's it's going to be too noticeable but just a little bit so that whenever we place these trees on the scene that they will fit more into the um into the environment and they'll feel like they kind of fade more into the ground rather than just being this kind of cut out shape so that's the purpose of this all right and once we have that looking good then what we can do is save this image as a png and we want to do that because a png will help us get a transparent background and we need just this shape of the tree we don't want the white background so uh, to do that we can go up here to the layers and turn off the background color and now we have just this tree shape and uh, transparent background and one thing you want to do before you export this this uh, this tree is just make sure that it's white uh, so if it's not white, it's not going to pick up the shape as well whenever we bring it into the brush editor. So just make sure that we go up here to the settings and the adjustments and just put the brightness all the way up just so that it's easily read and that uh, the software can read the shape. And so with that, then we can finally export and we'll just go up here to the wrench icon, go to share and we're going to tap on PNG and we're going to export this and save image. I'm just going to save it to the device, which is going to just put it in my uh, photos or the, the uh, camera roll or photos or whatever, so that we have it ready to import whenever we make the brush. And if you're using a PC, it would be very similar. You just want to save this as a, a, a uh, PNG if you use a Photoshop, for example. And then from there, you can just import the PNG image. But the key is to have a transparent background. Make sure that the shape itself is clearly readable and make sure if you're using Procreate, make sure that it's a white shape so that the software can read the shape. All right. And so now that we have that exported and saved, I'm going to tap on the check mark just to remove that from the screen. We're going to bring in the background color again and I'm going to make a new layer above everything here just to just to kind of have a blank space to test out the new brush that we're going to make. So uh, I'll go up here to the brush library and I'm going to tap on the plus icon at the top right. And this is where we can mess with the brush and um, mess with all the settings and just make it exactly how we want it. So the first thing I'll do is go to shape on the left side right here. And at the top right above this this uh, big circle, we're going to tap on edit. And at the top right of here, we're going to tap on import and import a photo. And this is where we can use the the uh, imported photo that we just saved, which is this tree. And once we have this imported in, we can tap on done. And now you can see that the brush has changed and it's no longer a circle shape, but it's now this tree shape. And that's good. So if we tap, and this is the drawing pad, we can increase the size just so we can see what we're doing. So if we tap on the uh, on this little area here, we can see that we have a tree stamp. But if we tap and drag, it gives us this kind of weird um, repeated shape. And, and we don't want that because I don't really see a, a purpose of using this in a painting. So we're going to uh, we can clear the drawing pad and we'll just kind of start over here. So this is currently what it looks like. And what I'll do is go up here at the top left to stroke path. We can start editing these settings to where we can make it more how we want it. So uh, the first thing we'll do is increase the spacing. And that's just going to space out these trees a little bit more. I'll bring mine to about 60%, around 60%. It doesn't have to be exact. If you want yours to be more spaced out when you tap and drag, or if you want it to be less spaced out, it's up to you. But I'm going to go with 60% there. And the next thing we can do is uh, add some jitter to it. And this basically makes it to where the the trees aren't on a straight path. They're a little bit randomized. 
and I don't want to do too much because it would be it would start to get a little too a little too chaotic there but just a little bit will be will be good to where if I do a straight line you can see that they're not perfect that they are a little uh, randomized and we're not going to mess with the fall off um, we're just going to keep that on none we can go to the next uh, thing stabilization we're going to skip that uh, taper we're going to skip that as well and we'll go to uh, shape the shape tab and I can increase the scatter which will also give like some randomization what this will do is just kind of rotate the uh, the angle of each tree so I'll put mine to like five percent I think should be fine I don't want in fact I'll probably do less than that maybe like two or three percent I don't want to do too much of this because if I start to do a lot then you can see like the trees start looking like they 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 fell over i don't want that so probably go to like two percent because i do want a little bit of that randomization so i think that should be good uh, we're not going to mess with count or count jitter either but you could if you want uh, for example to increase the count is just going to make more of a cluster of trees uh, grouped up together each stroke and this could work is is really a, a preference so if you want like to have a brush that has a cluster of trees every time you tap, then you would want to increase the count and uh, you can mess with the count jitter too. But I'm going to keep mine on one uh, so that every time I tap, it just gives me one tree and the count jitter. I'm just going to leave on none. All right. And now we can go to the grain. So the grain would be like the uh, the texture of the shape. I'm going to leave this as the default, which is just this basic plain white. But if you wanted to, you could edit and you could import and you could go to source library. And this is like Procreate's uh, source textures. And for example, if you want to do oil pastel, you can tap on that and you can see you can see that the texture of the tree changes. So like if you want to do that, you can. I'm not going to do it just because I want a solid shape, but it is there uh, for you if you want. So I'm going to just go back to the uh, blank texture just for this but again another one of those things that's just a preference so if you want to have a texture tree uh, feel free to do that and if you have a blank and if you do use the texture for the grain source then that's when these settings down here will come in handy so for example like i had before this oil pastel for these trees if we change the movement you can see that it's changing the uh the texture the scale increases the scale of the texture zoom uh, rotation depth so you can have it to where it's like a little bit of a texture not too much so you can really customize it but again like I said I'm just I'm not going to use a texture for this brush in particular but again you may want to so I just wanted to point that out uh, the rendering we can leave as it is we don't want to mess with this too much we also don't need to mess with the flow uh, or the wet edges burnt edges we'll just leave rendering alone as well as the wet mix we don't need to worry about that uh, color dynamics we can actually change so if we go up to the drawing pad i'm gonna just tap on the green uh, just so that we when we draw it's going to give us a green color and so we got some green trees here uh, what the color dynamics would do is just change the the dynamics of each tree that we paint so for example if we change the stamp color jitter and we change the hue what's going to happen is every tree stamp that we painted is going to be a slightly different hue so you see this one uh, the first one is orange then yellow orange we got some green ones in the middle and down here um, and the more we increase this lighter the more drastic the changes are going to be uh, as you can see right here it's, it, it starts to get like a basically like a rainbow of of different colors so you probably wouldn't want to do that uh, to max but we could do it to maybe like about maybe like close to 10 percent could work and you see some of these trees are more yellow and warmer some of them are cooler more like a blue green so that could work and that could and what that will do is help save us time uh and that each like each stamp of the tree would just be like a slightly different color which is realistic as well because not all trees are the same are the same hue um, we could also do that to saturation and it works the exact same way if we increase that some of the trees will be a little bit more 
desaturated and some of them will be more saturated. So I will do the same thing probably to around seven or eight percent. And we can do that with lightness and darkness as well. As you see, some of these trees will be darker, some of them lighter. Um, I'm not going to mess with that too much because I don't want to mess with the values, but I will do hue and saturation for the stamp so that for each individual tree stamp, it's a slightly different color. And so since this is a stamp brush and it's not like an actual uh, continual paint brush where, it, where, you know, like a round brush where it's a straight line, the stroke color jitter isn't going to matter because this the, the stamps aren't connected. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, don't just don't worry about the stroke color jitter for this particular brush. It's not going to matter. The color pressure would basically be if we let me clear the drawing pad real quick. If we tap lightly, we get these cooler color trees. And if I tap harder, we would get these uh, gr more green color trees. So you can mess with that if you want and you can have anything in between. But I usually don't mess with the color pressure or the color tilt. Tilt would basically be if you're tilting the, the, uh, the stylus, the more you tilt it, the more it would change the colors and stuff like that. And the color barrel roll, same thing. We're, we're just not going to mess with that. And we're going to skip Apple. We're going to come back to this uh, Apple Pencil settings, but I'm going to go down to properties real quick. And uh, where it says brush behavior, this maximum size, we'll probably want to increase this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to increase this to about like 450 or something like that, around that. And that just means that my brush is able to reach larger sizes without like maxing out if that makes sense uh, so we want it to be a little bit bigger because if we want to make a bigger brush or if we want to increase the uh, size of the tree we don't want to be like capped off at you know a, a small size and the minimum size i'm going to keep at none and now we can go back to the apple pencil settings and we can control the pressure size so if you move this slider to the right what's going to happen is the harder you press so if i tap hard it gives me a large tree if i tap uh small it's going to give me a smaller tree so the lighter you tap the, the smaller the tree the harder you tap the larger the tree and this could be useful i'll use it a little bit but i don't want it to be that drastic so i'll probably keep it at like 10 percent it's it, you know something you see the difference between those two that i just made or between let's see this is a hard tap and this is a light tap so it's not that big of a difference and you can also change the pressure opacity as well so if you don't like whenever you tap lightly you see how the tree is kind of uh, faded away it's not really that opaque and if you tap hard it is opaque if you don't like that you can turn down the pressure opacity to where to where it's the more the same so you can turn it off if you don't want that at all and no matter how hard you tap it'll be the same opacity and um I think I'm gonna go with that actually, because I don't really see myself using a using this brush if the trees aren't opaque. Like I wouldn't want the the trees to be like faded away, so I'm gonna keep that at none. And then we can I'll probably increase the size to like maybe 650. And this this one maximum size uh, brush behavior you can always change later. So if you find that you're using this brush and you don't like that you can't make it any bigger, you can always go back to the setting and increase the slider here uh, for the maximum size, just to give you a little bit more room to, to uh, work with. But we won't know until we test it out. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. And uh, so materials, we're not gonna worry about this. And about this brush, this is where you can sign your name um, right here. You can type in your name here if you want. And, um, and yeah, so that that would be basically how you make a, a tree brush. This is just a tree stamp brush. There are probably other types out there, but you could do this with any shape that you made. So if we tap on done, this is going to save the settings to our new brush. And uh, oh, one more thing you can do uh, back on this about this brush page. You can tap on this above here uh, at the top, this untitled brush, and you can title it whatever you want. So we'll just title it tree brush one and you can make a bunch of these and then you tap done. Now you got tree brush one. You could go and do the same process with this shape here or with this shape here. 
and you can make tree brush two, tree brush three. And for each one, you can have slightly different settings and, um, and have a different, a, a lot of variety of brushes. And the, the whole point of this is just to speed up the workflow, uh, make things more efficient and to save you some time when, when you have just to get in a bunch of tree shapes and you don't feel like painting each one uh, in particular. And we can see this on the canvas here. We can uh, see how it looks. And I think it looks good. And so one last little thing that we can do, if we have a tree like this in a scene, what we can do and what this is nice for is we can just tap and we get in a tree silhouette shape. And then what we can do is create a new layer above it and then set it to clipping mask. And then we can go in and actually add some more color and lighting to it. So where to where it's not just a silhouette shape. So I'll get like a warmer green and I can paint uh, one side of this. So something like this. And now you can start to see we're getting lighting like it's hitting the right side of the, uh, of the of the tree right there. Right. And now that tree looks like it has some lighting on it. We could probably do even more uh, on the, on the further right side. And this is messy, but you get the point. It's just to. Uh, speed things up to where we don't have to worry about drawing the actual silhouette of the tree every single time because we have this preset saved and it creates a much more efficient workflow for us so hopefully this helps i appreciate the support and uh if you have any questions in the comments let me know i do have a patreon page um and i'll leave the link in the description in case you want uh, any free brushes or in case you want like psd files for some of my work uh, but thanks again. I appreciate all the support and I will see y'all in the next video.